Bidenomics has people more stressed out than Obamanomics ever did. Now, we thought the economy couldn't get any worse than um, the two, 2008 uh, crisis under, uh, under Obama, but we were wrong. We, we put this man in charge, Biden, who even put a name to his horrible economy, which was a mistake on his end. Yeah, I bet you didn't think it was going to backfire like this, but I knew it was. I called it out when he started referring to his economy as Bidenomics, um, how it was going to backfire, and now look at it. And people are stressed about it. Um, I see it in my own practice. Uh, a lot of people are stressed about finances, and um, we don't see no end to this in sight. In fact, we we believe that it's going to get a lot a lot worse than what it is right now. And um, American people are feeling it, and they know this. And um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, but before we get started, go ahead and hit that like button. Share this out so we can get this information out there. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And hit that alarm bell so you know when I'm putting out new stuff. Also, check out my link chain in the description. It has a link to my Patreon where I talk about things I can't talk about here. There's also a link to my Instagram and my merch store. Also, check out jjthepsychotherapist.com for news as well. All right, let's talk about this news. The economic program, referred to as Bidenomics by the White House, is causing more stress among Americans than any time since the 2007-2008 subprime mortgage crisis that severely impacted the U.S. economy. Tip Insights reported that the IBD Tip Financial Stress Index reached its highest level since December 2008 with all 36 demographic groups experiencing elevated stress. In essence, regardless of race, gender, wealth, age, education, or geographical location, Bidenomics has left most people feeling stress. And I, and, and I don't understand why I'm still, get, people are still caping for this economy though. Like you should read some of the comments uh, that I get from the trolls defending Biden. Like I don't understand how he can be, we can be worse off in every single uh, uh, metric that you look at and you still cape for this guy. It, it's beyond, it's beyond me. But it's possible that President Joe Biden is indeed a unifying figure. The index has a scale from zero to 100 where a higher score indicates more stress and 50.0 represents the neutral point. The tip polling organization's a organization pointed out that, quote, the average financial stress level under President Biden policies is the highest at 65.6 compared to the past two presidents. This is even higher than during Barack Obama's first term when it stood at 61.1 after the subprime crisis. During Obama's second term, it dropped to 57.7. It seems that Biden might be more accomplished than Obama after all. Tip reported that the current level is also significantly higher than the financial stress level of 54.4 recorded during Trump's presidency. To be fair, the peaceful and prosperous times of 2017 through 2019 were marred by the COVID lockdowns in 2020, which affected Trump's score. Here's the situation after nearly three years of Bidenomics. To sum it up, Bidenomics has led to Bidenflation, which the tip CPI at 16.7% resulted in increased financial stress and higher costs for Americans. Many struggle to cover uh, their expenses as wages fall behind inflation and high gasoline prices add to financial strain. The return of student loan payments and concerns about government spending contribute to economic uncertainties. Additionally, the Fed's rate hike and the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict compounded fears of a recession with widespread disapproval of President Biden's economic management, even among Democrats. Adding to the stress is a medium-sized war in the Middle East that could escalate. Oil prices have already surged, and there are calls in Congress to impose sanctions on Iran's oil sales. This situation is partly attributed to Biden's pro-Iran foreign policy. Perhaps Biden isn't entirely aligned with Chinese interests. Uh, he is. We know he is. But even loyal Democrat politicians can't ignore the grim reality of Bidenomics. 
While they publicly express support for the Biden economy, some allied Democrats are privately concerned that putting the Biden name on this economy was a significant mistake. Again, I told them it was because it's a terrible economy. I don't know what blinded them to this, and I don't know who hyped this up and, and told Biden, let's start calling this economy Bidenomics. But in September, it was revealed that the median American income is no longer sufficient to afford a median American home, as well as the median price of a new car, which now exceeds $48,000. When a typical income can't cover these typical expenses, the traditional middle class is no longer viable under Bidenomics. According to Chris Talgo of the Heartland Institute, quote, 61% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, including approximately 75% of those earning less than 50,000 and 65% of those making 50 to 100,000. Consequently, many people have maxed out their credit cards and dipped into their retirement savings to make ends meet. Even more surprisingly, 45% of Americans earning over $100,000 claim to be living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, that's just wild. Under Bidenomics, $100,000 barely makes ends meet. It's no wonder everyone is stressed out. Bidenomics have achieved all of this without a major crash like the one in 2007-2008. One can only imagine the stress that will ensue when the bills for Bidenomics extravagant spending and investments in clean energy come due. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be tragic. But let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. Like, share, subscribe, and check out JJThePsychotherapist.com for the latest in news. Until next time, peace.